Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for sections 10.5 and 10.6, Scientific Notation, Reading and Writing. Our essential question is, how do you read numbers that are written in scientific notation, and how do you write numbers that are in standard form into scientific notation? Today, you are going to need your Jaguar dots on sections 10.5 and 10.6, your pen and your pencil, you might need a calculator to help our calculations moving along quickly. Your bright ideas, some creativity, and as always, some problem solving skills. To begin with, a number written in scientific notation when it is represented as a product of a factor and a power of 10. So when we're looking at scientific notation, like 5.3 times 10 to 7, there are some components of it. We begin with that 5.3. It's a whole number between 1 and 9. So we want to like put 10 point something or 10 times 10 is always going to be that that 1 point something. So that before that decimal is always going to be 1 point something. So when we say that whole number, what I'm talking about is what is between before the decimal place right here. I always want that to be between one and nine. And then this part right here, it's always going to be 10. And the exponent will always be an integer. If it's a big number, it's always going to be moving the decimal to the left. And if it's a small number, it's always going to be moving the decimal to the right. So these are just some really quick points about scientific notation. So the best way to understand these is just to actually start working with them. So is the number in scientific notation or not? So here's a quick little checklist. Is the first number a whole number between one and nine? Is the base a power of 10? And is the exponent an integer? So if we look at the first one, 2.5 times 10 to the negative nine, the first number is a whole number between one and nine. The base is a power of 10, yes, and the exponent is an integer. So all three criteria are met, so we're good. So if we look at B, we have 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 6. Um, the first number, so when we say the first number, we're talking about that number in front of the decimal. We don't care what happens after the decimal, it's just that number in front of the decimal that matters. And the number in front of the decimal is a 0. 0 is not between 1 and 9, so right there, nope, it's not in scientific notation. We only need one of those things to fall apart to be able to say no. So our answer is no. The digit in front of the decimal is not between 1 and 9. So this right here, that's 1 and 9. We're talking about that. That's that one digit in front of the decimal. So this one is not in scientific notation. So this little checklist, it's a really great checklist to keep handy when you're being asked if they're in scientific notation. Example number two, write the number in standard form. Standard form just says put it into a regular number. So again, remember, and maybe this is a great thing to just jot down. If we have a positive exponent, the number is going to be bigger. So we're going to move our decimal to make a bigger number. If it's a negative, it's going to get smaller. So that's a really good thing to remember right off the bat. It's a good thing maybe to jot down to have some reference. So we have 2.75 times 10 to the negative three. So what we wanna do is we wanna write down that decimal negative three. So this means smaller. So usually what I do is I circle it and I put decimal. I just remind myself what my answer is going to be. I see the negative and the negative says decimal or smaller. So now what I have to do is I have to start making it smaller. And how many spaces smaller? The three tells me how many spaces. So I make what I call little hammocks. So I'm going to take it from right here where it started and now I have to make it three hammocks. I have to move it three places to the right. So I'm going to go one, two, and three, and I need to put in my new decimal. We always give it a leading zero and then every place that doesn't have something, I need to fill it in. So it looks kind of ugly right now and this is why I didn't put a true equal sign. So now I have to rewrite it because I cannot have two decimals in an answer. And right now I have two decimals. So it's going to go 0 0.00275. So my answer is 0 0.00275. And that's my answer. 
So when we're doing scientific notation, we're just moving the decimal. I could have taken my 10 and made that to the right number and figured it out, multiplied it out. But really, we're going to make this short and simple and just get the problem done. So here we have 7. So this is larger, and so I'm going to write it down. I'm going to tell myself the direction I'm going to go. Larger, that means it has to go this way. And now I'm going to start doing that problem. 6.38, and now I had to start moving that decimal. 1 has to get bigger. 2, how many places do I have to go though? 7, because it tells me. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's my decimal place. That's the new one. So every place I don't have a number, I have to fill it in with a zero. One, two, three, four, five. So now I need to rewrite it. Six, three, eight, followed by one, two, three, four, five zeros. And now I'm going to fill in my commas. Every third one gets a comma. And there's my answer. Numbers before the decimal get commas, numbers after the decimal do not get commas. So we could do lots of examples, but we could save that for in class. This is how you do it. So now when we want to compare, we need to be very careful about this. We can't make assumptions that just because I see the three or I see the two, numbers are bigger or smaller. We have to take these into standard form in order to actually put them in order from least to greatest. So 1.0 times 10 to the third, 1.0. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. So I have to fill it in with two zeros. So my answer is 1,000. Then I have 1.84 times 10 to the third, 1, 2, 3. So now I have 1,840. So right now, that's my biggest number. And it looks like this is going to be my biggest number because right now it has a six as a leading number. But let's just figure this out. 6.41, but this is only going two places. One, two. So my answer is 641. So that's actually my smallest number. But when I write it, I have to go back to my original numbers. So remember, when you're doing this, you always go back to the original numbers. So I'm going to put letters next to it. So I'm going to go A, that's my smallest, B, and C, so that I put them in the right order. So my smallest is 6.41 times 10 to the second. That was my smallest. 1.0 times 10 to the third. And then 1.84 times 10 to the third. So this one was a little bit misleading. Some of you might have thought that that 6.41 was going to be the largest because you saw the six, but it was only two times 10 to the second power. So my decimal didn't go over as far. So you, you are going to have to pay really close attention to what's happening with those numbers. So now we're going to go in reverse. Now we're going to take these into scientific notation. So we're going to use the middle column to show our work and then the last column to write our answer. So <clears throat> write the answer without any commas and just write it out. So what our rule says is our decimal has to go after that first number. So let's put a decimal in. Go ahead and put a big fat decimal so you don't miss it. So now we have to count how many places does it go to get back to where it started. So we started here and that's where we need to begin. Okay, so it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So now the question is, is this a big number or is this a small number? This is a big number. So we're going to use a pos or positive exponent. So the number is, we don't worry about the zeros at the end. The number is 2.45 times 10 to the what? How many places did we move it? six places. So we're going to do the same. Don't forget your decimal. One, two, three, four, five. And then the four and the five. Okay, we have to have one decimal, one number in front of it, put a big fat decimal, and that's where it started. 
So now we have to count how many is between. One, two, three, four, five, six again. But is this a big number or a small number? It is a small number. So we're going to use a negative. So our answer is 4.5 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, you guys try this next one. All right, where did you put that decimal? It should have gone right here, and it started here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. This is a big number, so it's going to be positive. So you should have done 5.0. We just need one of those zeros times 10 to the, now is it positive 4 or negative 4? It's a big number, so it's positive 4. Okay, try these next two on your own and then come back and see how you did. All right, so you had 0 0.005. Okay, so we need that to go in front of that 5. It started here, so that's 1, 2, 3, but it's a small number, so we're going to do a negative. So it's 5.0 times 10 to the negative 3. Remember, it's always times 10 and then that number. And then this last one, 0 point, but we'll use an x, and then it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then a 3 and a 3. Okay, our new decimal has to go between those two 3s. And so it went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but it was smaller, so it'll be negative. So 3.3 times 10 to the negative 7. How'd you do? I bet you did really well because you remember that big numbers are going to be positive and small numbers are going to be negative. Keep on practicing. As you practice, you're going to get better at these. What kind of exponents do you use on the base of 10 to make those decimals smaller than one and larger than one? In other words, decimals and then big numbers, a big number and a small number. Those are those big questions I want you to be able to talk about when you come to class. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, be kind to one another because we all can use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.